He is John Sadler. How are you, man? Man, I, I've been in great good fine okay universe for the past like week. So <clears throat> uh, I am. Thanks. I feel like I am John Sadler right at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to be. Good place to start. Like what? There's a lot of dancing in that place. <laughs> a lot of dancing. There's right? a lot of yeah. a lot of moving in that universe. That's um, right. That's right. <laughs> but of course, well, John Sadler. Oh man, it's great to see you. Of course, of a great, good fine okay. One of the what, a great, a great um, you know, dance duo that's been going on for ten years. That's incredible. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, it's it's not lost on us how rare and kind of crazy that is that um, that we've got on this long. Does it feel, John, like like ten years? Like oh god, a decade? Or does it feel like it was just yesterday that you met Luke? Uh, it's funny. Sometimes it seems like just yesterday and sometimes it seems like a long time. Like it seems like a long time since we like wrote our first song together. That seems like ages to ages ago, sure. but, but there are certain like shows like, um, when we played our first seven shows at South by Southwest in, I think it was 2014, those shows are like, it seems like yesterday, like I can still feel what that felt like driving down there and, you know that whole thing so yeah kind of uh situation dependent totally totally and, and it's incredible i mean i'm constantly amazed at um you know longevity in this industry john you know obviously lots of friends here in nashville and and you know bands break up bands grow up and all sorts of things happen kids um you know but but just to tell my audience i may not know about you guys i mean you guys have written songs by st lucia foxes 21 pilots you guys have toured like you said south by southwest you know, with Betty Who, Joy Wave, Magic Man. I mean, I could spend 17 minutes just talking about your accolades. But what's been the secret, you know, John, to the longevity? You know, you, I'm sure you're a different guy than you were there. How are you, how are you guys have been able to keep it together? Yeah, I think that, well, first of all, Luke and I have become friends, you know, so that helps. We actually like working with each other. And I think there's like, um, you know, we we really like fill in the gaps that the other person doesn't have. Luke is very much the producer engineer, uh, musical mind of the whole thing. He has, uh, you know, a master's in jazz composition and, and I've never been, uh, I, I never went to music school. Right. And I write, um, most of the lyrics and the melodies and am like the emotional being in the thing. Right. And so our two things combined, uh, are, is it's really special. And we just never take that for granted. It's like, um, yeah, we, we've always said we feel like we're greater than the sum of the parts. And I think we, you know, things have gotten tough. We obviously, when you're in a relationship with someone for that long, it feels like family, you know, and you butt heads. But I think we always kind of come back to that place where we're like, okay, wait, but we have something really special and, uh, and let's keep making music and content. And whenever we just like do that and focus, um, it's exciting and new things happen oh, and yeah. yeah, like we getting cool opportunities, like 
we keep doing cool collaborations great things keep happening so it's easy to just kind of stay in it even though it's been a long time sure sure yeah that makes sense john and by the way you know your new single blame which is out now by the way i mean your your song your voice sounds so good your falsetto and and, and part of me if i'm wrong but like i said i've had a chance to kind of listen to your whole like journey i feel like your voice is as good as ever i mean you still have the falsetto but I feel like you got a little bit of rage, got some maturity in there. Am I reading too much into this or am I wrong? No, no, I think you're right. In fact, I think in my opinion, you know, I'm maybe the worst person to judge it, but I do think my voice is better than it's ever been. And I think that's just from experience and singing and, you know, also working with Luke, who is, um, you know, very hard on me as far as pitch and tone and all that stuff goes. And it seems like more and more every year when we record, he wants it to be uh, perfect, and so do I. And so, um, yeah, instead of getting lazier with everything, I think we've gotten even sharper with everything, including my voice. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's like an instrument that I I try to keep um, sharpening uh, the skill every year. And so I'm happy to hear that to you. It sounds like it's getting better and not worse. I'm still fairly young. So, oh, so let's talk when I'm 70 and you can tell me if it. Yeah. <laughs> if right, I right. kept it going like Paul McCartney, you know what I mean? Right, right, definitely. Um, by the way, you're in LA right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How has that um, moved? Uh, you guys were like synonymous with with Brooklyn there for a while, and and that was that was a leap. You guys have been in LA, I think, for two years. How's that changed? Totally, it's been huge. I mean, I was in Brooklyn for 18 years, uh, and really, that was my home, and I love New York, and it's like definitely my heart. And Luke was there for a very long time too. Uh, he and his wife moved to LA about a year and a half ago now. Um, and I just moved here six months ago and yeah, it's very significant for us to be here. Uh, but it does feel like the right place to be the collaborative energy in LA with sure. all the writers and and producers being here right now. It's just kind of a no brainer where we have to be. Um, and since I've moved here, uh, we've been a lot busier working together. The other two guys in our band, Danny and Carrie also live out here. Um, so it just makes, like I said, collaboration a lot easier. Uh, and so, so far so good. Yeah. You know, I, I totally hear you on that. Like I'm in Nashville and I'm constantly amazed with that. You know, like I, I see, you know, some of our artist colleagues, they go and, and they get constantly inspired by like what's going on, you know? With all the colleagues. Right? Yeah, Nashville is the same kind of place uh, where there's just that spirit of collaboration, even more yeah. than New York now, uh, unfortunately. Why is that, John? Because, you know, when you read about, like, the early 2000s in New York, I mean, I love New York as much as everybody, you know, and you read about, you know, that era of the yeah, 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 the strokes. And actually, my good friend Nicole Atkins, our only Thousand, that are from New York but live here now, like, all these, like, incubation of New York energy that happened, why do you think that kind of, like, dissipated? Yeah, and and you're totally right. And when we started in 2013, uh, it was still kind of like that. And New York did feel like the right place to be. And all of the people I'm talking about who are now in LA, who we collaborate, were in New York. It seems like everybody we work with out here lived in New York. And um, I'm not 100 percent sure why there was that migration. Uh, and I wish it didn't happen as a New Yorker, but um, but it just did. And now, obviously, and and. Don't get me wrong. There's probably great scenes in New York still um, that I don't know about uh, and people thriving there. Uh, and then obviously theater is um, 100 percent there and other different kinds of art forms are thriving there. But as far as pop music goes and uh, pop writing, producing and that kind of stuff, it does seem like L.A. is the place to be. Yeah, 100 percent. And I'll ask you about Blame in a second, but are you into theater, John? I love it. I've, I, I, you know, I was in musicals in high school, uh, and then I did uh, a musical in college, and um, that's as far as my own theater career went. But I love going to Broadway, and yeah, that I have sense. some really good. Friends. That makes some really total good sense, John, because you know, just seeing videos of you guys perform. I mean, I remember seeing one from Firefly, twenty twenty one, I believe. I mean, that's a that's a that's a whole experience. It's not just a musical show. You got the kimonos going. You break the fourth <laughs> wall with the crowd. Um, you know, it's, it's just like a spectacular kind of like 360 experience. Is that where the, I was going to ask you, is that where it came from, from like your Broadway kind of inspiration? Or was it like, you know, you saw David Bowie when you were a child and it just blew your mind? Yeah, I mean, I think Luke and I both take performing as an art form really seriously. 
where we do consider it more, uh, you know, obviously the music's the most important thing, but we want it to be an experience for people. We want it to be a show. Um, to what you're saying, some of my favorite artists are Prince and Bowie and Michael Jackson and these people who were performers. And I've always been like that. Not only am I a singer and a songwriter, um, I, you know, performing is one of my favorite things. So uh, any, anything we can do to make it feel like an experience for people we're going to do. Um, and so I'm glad that it comes across. So thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. John. And, uh, let's, let's shift gears here with, uh, the new single blame, cause it's, it's the first preview of, you know, it's like your first new music in a couple of years and uh, of what's to come in 2024. But I think what I love the most, obviously it's still like, you know, your sound and your voice, but I feel like it, there's a lot of depth and beautiful message to it. And I think that your empathy, John, you're a beautiful human being. You've always been, you know, in tune with women's rights and with minorities, you've always been very empathetic in your in, in your in your life, and I think this this song speaks of that. And, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're making you're talking about empathy and other people's problems becoming your problems, and kind of like that being like the next step of love, like loving another besides yourself. Um, first of all, if I'm wrong, please correct me. That's what I thought of it. And tell me, like, what, is that like? Tell me a little bit about how that came about. That beautiful message that we all need. Yeah, no, I, and that's a huge compliment. I think that part of what makes someone a great songwriter is being extra empathetic um, to people to, because, you know, I can always write about my life. There's never ending uh, amounts of fuel <laughs> for that. But also understanding what other people are going through um, is so important to be able to connect in that way. Um, yeah, so that song, it's a very simple concept of, we all end up in these relationships where often other people's messes become our problems. And on the surface, that can be annoying and it can make you want to leave. But it did occur to me like, but isn't that what we all want? Isn't that the deepest form of love to accept other people's stuff as your own, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, you put it well and that that's kind of, that is what that song is about. And for this next batch of songs, while we continue doing what we do best, I think, which is writing about very simple, easy to understand concepts and everybody can relate to, I think there's this gray area and nuance that everybody can um, kind of inject their own um, interpretation and meaning as it relates to their own life. Um, we tried more lyrically on this one to be a little more like, um, like I said, gray area. And so, uh, yeah, we're excited about that one. We like that that one feels quintessential GGFO as far as it being dancey. Um, we're huge fans of disco, and we feel like that's definitely the most disco song we've ever done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, John. Well, listen, thank you for your time. You got a lot of Southern California cool stuff to do, and it's the holidays. But let me leave you with this. Uh, you know, yeah. you got 10 years of the GGFO, unbelievable, starting decade number two. What, you know, you guys have been around the world three times, played every corner, gone around with this and that. What are some pinch me moments that you still sometimes, you know, you're just, you know, hiking in Laurel Canyon with your green juice for your throat. And you're like, man, I can't believe we did that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. And there are a lot of moments like that. The ones that immediately come to my mind are um, in 2019, right before the pandemic, we played six shows in China. And when we went over there, uh, we didn't know if we had fans because, you know, they have different uh, social media, different right. um, streaming platform. But, you know, long story short, we got offered, you know, X amount of money to come do these shows. And then we thought, OK, whatever. Well, worst case scenario, it'll be a free trip to China. And none of us have ever been there. We get over there and we have a huge fan base in China and all the shows are sold out. Um, every show is as you know, buzzing and packed as a New York City show is for us here. Um, and just seeing that, you know, we have that kind of fan base in places we don't know about was like, you know, ex super exciting. Uh, so that trip uh, is definitely like right up there in my mind when I'm hiking. Um, what else? We've, we, you know, we've gotten to play some amazing venues in certain cities. Uh, the, uh, the one show in Chicago stands out where we played this place called um, Talia Hall, uh, which isn't the biggest place in the world. I think it's seven or 800 capacity, but there was just like something about that show. And that's the thing. When you played so many shows, people could be like, doesn't it get boring playing the same songs and this and that? And aren't all the venues the same? And 
it's almost like the exciting thing about touring a lot is you start um, feeling that there is huge differences between the shows. And I, and some of it is like magic. Like you don't know where it's coming from, whether it's the venue or the audience at that moment or how we're feeling at that moment. But that show in Chicago was one of those moments. We've played shows in LA that felt like that. Um, you know, certain shows in Austin that felt like that where there's just this like magic air. And, um, and even though we've played so many shows, I still get like that tinge from those certain ones. Uh, yeah, I mean, I could go on and on with cool moments, okay. but, uh, just overall, it's like, it's still exciting to, to wake up and, you know, see what email I have because, uh, cool things are still happening and we're still making content. I think what with the music we're making now, the videos we're making now are, uh, the best we've ever done. So oh, I'm just like super excited for our fans who have been there for us all this time, uh, to get this stuff and, and um, you know, Phenomenal. just keep having, having that relationship with them after all this time. Phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, John Sadler, you've said it all, but yeah, you guys, I think you guys are entering a beautiful chapter of your career. You guys are leaving a mark that, you know, whenever it's all said and done, I think you guys are going to leave, are leaving a legacy behind. And uh, it's great to have you on the show, and we cannot wait for your new music. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate the kind words, and uh, thank you for having me. It's an honor. Absolutely. Take care. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here for the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from J-Rod Concerts Media.